Sure, he's gotta catch them all, but he caught these. This is Ashley with Watch Mojo, and today we're gonna be counting down our picks for the top 10 Pokemon you forgot Ash caught. For this list, we'll be going over the Pokemon that Ash Ketchum captured, traded for, or traveled with that you probably forgot about. As always, you can catch me on Twitter at AshJPo, so head over there, give me a follow, and let me know which Pokemon list you want to see next. Number 10, Apom. While many viewers are probably familiar with Dawn having her own Apom, and later Ambipom, it's easy to forget that she got the monkey-like normal type from Ash, who traded it to Dawn in exchange for her Buizel. Hello? That's weird. I never would have thought of something like that. This ape arm was first introduced as a wild Pokemon that pursued Ash and company, frequently stealing his hat and getting into other mischief, before eventually being caught. <laughs> While it still maintained a love for trickery under Ash's care, it also helped him win contests and even a gym battle. Apom, I choose you! <laughs> Number 9, Palpitoad. It can be tough to remember that this dippy looking tadpole Pokemon even exists, much less that Ash has one. Alright, go Pokeball! Only appearing for a mere nine episodes, mostly during the black and white portion of the anime, Ash's Palpitoad actually sees plenty of time in battle, especially during his clashes in gyms. Palpitoad, I choose you! <laughs> However, it's not often seen outside of battle, which doesn't give it a chance to leave much of an impression. That, along with its long gaps between its few appearances, and it's no wonder fans forget about it. Palpatoad, use Mudshot! Quick dodge! <laughs> Number 8, Lapras. Come on. Get up and get moving, you stupid lump. Those who have seen the Orange Islands arc during the early part of the anime probably remember Lapras being a major aspect. It was in the opening, after all. Give it a few seasons, however, and the Pokemon Ash used as little more than a blue dinosaur-shaped water taxi is a little harder to recall. Initially separated from its herd, it served as Ash's main source of transportation, becoming involved in the occasional battle and even a race. Oh, thanks, Lapras. Nice catch. <laughs> it would have made for a killer addition in later journeys if it hadn't shuffled off back to its fellow Lapras come the end of Ash's gap year around the islands. Be happy, Lapras. At least you won't have me on your back anymore. What was that? Whoa! Ah! Number 7, Primeape. <laughs> Given that it appeared in a whopping two episodes, it's pretty easy to overlook this fluffy ball of rage. First encountered as a wild and especially aggressive Mankey, this fighting type Pokemon spends its first appearance attacking and pranking Ash, Team Rocket, and just about anyone else nearby before finally being captured. I choose you, Primate! <laughs> While its unruly nature makes Ash hesitant to use it in battle, Primeape eventually proved useful during a tournament for fighting types, although Ash ultimately decided to leave it behind to be trained, which he apparently never followed up on. You keep on training and winning, Primeape, and I'll always be grateful and proud that I knew a real P1 champion! <laughs> Number 6, Glalie. For how uncommon they are, you'd think that ice types would be more memorable, but Glalie is just one of those Pokemon that faded into the background post Hoenn region. As short its pre-evolution, Snowrunt, before evolving it, where it retained its frequent quirk for freezing him solid. No way! My Snowrunt! 
despite using Glalie in some double battles and in the Evergrande conference, Ash shelves this somewhat scary floating face shortly afterwards. Even after bringing Glalie back for the Lily of the Valley conference due to its strength, Ash doesn't end up using it. Kudos to Ash for Infernape learning Flare Blitz. So it appears we'll be facing off against the team of Infernape, Torterra, and Glalie. Number 5. Muck Most of Ash's Pokemon tend to be either cute or tough looking. Muck is, uh, let's say, well, less than photogenic. <laughs> It's a purple blob of poisonous slime. That may explain why Ash didn't keep it around after catching it. Either that, or he just couldn't stand the horrendous odor. Despite smelling gross, Ash's muck is very affectionate and is happy to hug its trainer and pretty much anyone it can get its blobby frame around. Uh, muck, it's great to see you again. Yeah. Its role in the series after its capture is usually to provide comic relief by interacting with Professor Oak, although it does get a few prominent battles here and there. I choose you! Bug, bug. Number 4, Tauros. And Tauros gets a second chance from the challenger. The wild bull Pokemon looks rested and ready to rumble. Let's shake him up! Most of the Pokemon Ash catches are singular. In other words, he doesn't catch multiples of a single species. However, there is one notable exception, Tauros. He has 30 of these. Oh my Pokemon! <laughs> Fans outside of Japan were extremely confused by this, and rightfully so, since the episode when Ash caught them all was never aired in most countries. It's likely that their uncertain origins, as well as that old adage about quality over quantity, has kept Ash's Tauros hood from sticking out among the rest of his roster, which is pretty odd considering they've literally stampeded him before. Come on, Tauros, let me down! Please! I'm happy to see you guys too, but enough is enough already! Number 3, Larvitar. Larvitar, the rock skin Pokemon. Larvitar generally hatch deep within the earth and take a long time before coming to the surface. While Ash didn't technically catch this Pokemon, it does travel with him and his friends for a while. An infant that hatches from a random egg, Ash and company seek to return this cute but tough Pokemon to its home, given that it was initially taken by poachers. While this trusting of humans, Lavitar eventually comes to be friends with Ash during its brief travels with him, even joining the esteemed ranks of those who have made Team Rocket blast off again. All right, troops, let's roll! Right! After reuniting with its mother, this Lavitar hasn't been seen again, except in flashbacks. Hey, listen! Larvitar and Tyranitar are saying goodbye too! Goodbye, Larvitar! We'll miss you! Number 2, Raticate. Alright, they're having a battle! Got you! Raticate, super fang attack! Ash has made very few Pokemon trades, and his first might be why. While aboard the Saint Anne or SS Anne, Ash fights a gentleman who uses a Raticate that proves challenging for his Butterfree. Despite Ash nearly beating him, the guy tries to play it off like a draw and asks to trade for Ash's clearly stronger one. Well, that's all there is to it. Raticate is your new Pokemon. After getting some bad advice from Brock, Ash goes through with it, though he quickly regrets it and trades back in the same episode. Though he briefly uses Raticate in battle. Huh? Ash, you traded it, remember? Oh yeah. Butterfree. We're just glad that Ash realized that the evolved form of a rat he could catch by tossing a Pokeball out of his window in Pallet Town was a poor exchange for his beloved Butterfree. 
Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure to go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Beedrill As forgettable as our last entry was, this one takes the cake for a reason. It just barely qualifies. <laughs> At the National Park in Johto, Ash participates in a bug catching contest. While there, he gets into the spirit of things and ultimately wins the competition by capturing a bee drill. <laughs> Despite being allowed to keep it for himself, Ash gives his newly acquired pocket monster to the equally forgettable side character Casey, since it fits her color themed team of yellow and black. I think you should be the one to have this Pedro, Casey. <gasps> After all, you and Bayleaf got me out of Team Rocket's batting cage, and I know how much you love Yellow Stripe Pokemon. So not only does Ash's Beedrill only appear in one episode, but he gives it away just like that. You think some of these Pokemon have abandonment issues? Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.